Friday World Show with no name. I'm Adele Palmer. <laughs> and, and I'm Fiona Rusiana. I was trying to fix my fix my seat. <laughs> Seriously, just like it. <laughs> oh, my God. Fix my seat, I said. <laughs> oh, of course you said that. We're, we're, we come to you every Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. Australian Central Daylight Time, Standard Time, my oh God, I'm wishing, uh, which would mean it was summertime. And we love to bring to you people and organisations, charities, not-for-profits, community fundraisers who are doing amazing things to help the people in the communities around them. And today is no different. We have an amazing woman and I'm going to let Fiona introduce her. Yeah. So we do have an amazing woman who was brought... Now, this is the power of Facebook. If it wasn't for Facebook, we wouldn't have known about this incredible woman that we're about to interview Sherry Beck is, so she has, we've got a link above to her Facebook page. Definitely, definitely, definitely jump in and have a look at that. So Sherry Beck uh, will tell us a little about her story when she, when we bring her in shortly. Her daughter was diagnosed with epilepsy. Now, if anybody out there has ever had an experience witnessing someone having a tonic-clonic seizure, will understand the impact that that feels when your own child's having one and the first one as well. So the first the first seizure is very scary. So you have no idea what to do and how to help them. Um, so Sherry in 2017 walked, now she can correct me if I've got this figure wrong, it was 1,600 kilometres from Adelaide to uh, Alice Springs to raise awareness and funds for epilepsy um, and she's added again now we'll bring her in shortly she's added again now walking from Alice Springs through to Darwin so it's one and a half thousand kilometers she's up to I just saw I was stalking her page earlier and saw that she walked 53 kilometers in one day which is hey, crazy only it's called professional research <laughs> yeah yes, yes I was professionally researching her page <laughs> If you don't want it known, don't put it on Facebook. That's what I say. <laughs> but this is a great cause and we do want it known. So. <laughs> That's right. So without any further ado, now we did have some technical difficulties, but with technical difficulties comes... Challenges and comes opportunities. It yeah. does. And, and some quick thinking. So we've got Sherry in on the phone. She'll be voice only. She can't hear me too well. So you won't hear me saying too much. I'll be playing in comments. Otherwise, it's just going to make it awkward for Sherry. So one for the books, right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, so Sherry. I'm fine. Now, Sherry, thank you so much. We were just, uh, the only was explaining that we were having some technical difficulties bringing you on. And what we're doing, I'm going to show people, you can't see, but we're doing it the old fashioned way. I've actually got Sherry on loudspeaker on the phone all the way from, I believe it's Daily Waters. Okay, we're just leaving Daily Waters now. Okay, so so for the next uh, 20 or so minutes, uh, Sherry, if you don't mind sharing with us a little bit about your journey and the only is, you know, shared in the introduction, I don't know how much of that you heard, but she did said about your daughter um, having epilepsy and you were being prompted to walk already. We've got some background noise there, but that's part of uh, part of what's happening. So, um so could you share with us a bit about your journey, Sherry? Yeah, sure. Sorry about all these technical difficulties. If you can get to me, let me know. I will try and hop back to the phone home again. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I, every second word is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter if you in the blank. Um, if, yeah, if it comes too hard, let me know and I'll pop back into the van. That's not a problem. Okay. Um, all right. So, yeah, our journey with um, epilepsy began back in 2014 when my daughter was diagnosed after having a first seizure when she was 12 years old. Um, and it opened my eyes to a whole new world, a world that I didn't really know existed. Um, and I realised that there was very little support, very little government funding, and a lot of our supports were taken away. And I made a promise that um, when we got ourselves stabilised and what I got out of what I was referring to the hellhole that I would do everything within my power um, to see ahead to change and to build a community of support around um, epilepsy and awareness. So here I am now healing my promise. Sorry, I missed that last bit, Sherry. 
I said I'm out here um, living my promise because yeah. I promised that, um, yeah, I would do everything within my power to create epilepsy awareness and yes. community support and that's what I'm doing. And I'm just I'm curious as to why the walking. I mean, I'm I'm super super impressed, and uh, it's it's something that you know sort of people talk about that you know we're oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, but very rarely do. And mm -hmm. to how I know the drive to actually get up and do that, and the logistics around doing that. If you want to share a little bit about how that comes together, because it's <laughs> well, yeah, it's just. Oh. for you to get out here and do something like that. Um, it was like a series of events that really got me to where it was. I had come from a very dark place um, and I very briefly I actually went to a massage therapist who looked at me in the eyes and she says, you've got the ability to run marathons. And at the time I was around 95 kilos and I looked at her and I snorted. I think it was <laughs> and I said, you see what I see? But she looked me dead in the eye and she said, you have the ability to run marathons. So I'm not really sure whether to blame her or hurt her, but she's probably <laughs> I was going to say, I was saying, I'd be in a very dark place and I was wanting, I had my self worth being through domestic violence. Um, and I was just searching for, for something better. I knew that there was something in my, um, you know, my potential that I could yeah. I could do better. And I went to go to the series of mindset um, events. And it was in one of the four-day events I attended there that cleared a lot of my old beliefs, limiting, uh, limiting beliefs rather. And I and not as cliche as it sounds, I got a, a glimpse of what my intention was. Um, and by combining that with M epilepsy, um, commitment, and I understand that the when you make a commitment, that the universe will open everything up to you. Um, and as long as you follow through, you'll be here. I am. Yeah. So this is your second <laughs> second track. Did you? So the first yeah, one was in twenty seventeen. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, started that one. I went from to Alice Springs, so that was a sixteen hundred k journey, and about to be three days to do that. So this is the stage I came into Alice Springs um, in November two thousand and seventeen, thinking that was it, and I was done. Um, I realised there was actually um, a lot more that I was still willing to give. Um, so I had originally dreamed that I wanted to walk the entire shop. I went to do it, and here I am. So it took from, um, did you say November 2017? Yes, yeah, so, so September 23rd I left. I arrived in Alice Springs on the 4th of November. Okay, and then so for so 18 months later you've regrouped and... and finishing off my original plan. So are you, um, are you working, so so is it, are you going from Alice Springs to Darwin this time or all the way? Alice Springs, Darwin. Okay, sorry. beautiful. And and so you're at Daily Waters today? Correct. Yeah, I'm, about, I'm just walking past the sign that says I'm 160 days south of Mataranka. So okay. Google that. <laughs> we're, we're sharing photos from your page with everybody. So is this the NP link? Is this, tell us, is he a truck driver that just came past or is he part of your crew? Which one was that? There was the one that where you actually had the post on there saying that you were, I think it might have been even yesterday's post, Sherry, where you were saying that you were feeling a little bit mentally challenged and uh, there was a couple of road trains that stopped and there's a beautiful photo of you standing there next to uh, the, or actually on the, running board at the NT link. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they were just random truck drivers that had heard them, so because obviously the, they talk on their CB, they see this crazy woman walking in the highways, they're all talking, and yeah, there's a couple of guys um, stopped and donated generously, um, but it's not a big rush. We've we just lost, um, I've just lost you after donated generously, so. Yes. Going past. Um, yeah, so the, I have no affiliation. They were just random um, truck drivers that had heard of my story. 
and um, it's not uncommon for them to, you know, settle up in the middle of the road and offer encouragement or honk their horn or whatever it might be. So definitely getting a bit of a reputation between the truck drivers at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you couldn't, excuse me, you couldn't hope for better support, really. <laughs> Absolutely. They travel a few kilometres, those guys. And they, and yeah. They've got massive hearts and uh, and they would have lots of time to uh, to think about how they're going to donate. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so, no. so you're actually, you're on the road now, you're actually walking now. Yep, as we speak. We did have video, otherwise I could show you <laughs> all the termite mounds and the red dirt that's around me. Well, we've got, uh, Theoni's been sharing some photos from your page and so we've had a little glimpse and there was one there of you with, it said, see, and they had flies everywhere. <laughs> my God. Oh, um, there it is. I have swallowed about three or four of the little blighters. <laughs> they don't look little. <laughs> Now, I do want to go back to... I think I I'm do, just asking a question. Hang on, Sherry. Sure. I do want to go back to now for anybody out there who hasn't experienced, like there are a lot of people. So I, going back to a personal story, so three or not three years ago, so about a year and a half ago, my husband had his first seizure. And that was the first time I'd ever experienced a seizure as, you know, witnessed a seizure. And it is a scary thing to watch. But... He's a grown man. He's my husband. It'd be complete. My reaction, I mean, you love them no matter who they are, but when it's your child, it's a completely different thing. So how did you how did you cope with that initially, witnessing that very first seizure? It's not like I said, it's definitely not. No, Sherry, we're only getting every second or third word now. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now you come back in. Yep. Okay, let me just stand still here for a moment. You the first seizure actually happened with Emily's grandparents. So I was at work at the time. Um, I got the phone call to say that, uh, quite a hysterical phone call from my mum, and I was just picking out words like seizure, it looks like she was going to die, I got the ambulance mm. here, and it certainly sent the adrenaline rushing. Mm. The paramedics understanding that I wasn't conveying what you know what was going on, they picked up the phone and they said to me, look, your daughter's had a five-minute tonic-clonic seizure, she'll be okay, and we're going to take her off. Well, as a mum, to lower my adrenaline, I just hung on to the words of she's going to be okay. So I went, all right, it's, you know, it's a cold, it's a flu, it's that type of thing, we'll just get to the hospital, we'll get us sorted out and we'll all be okay. Mm. I remember telling the Ambos, I'll meet them over at the hospital, I work just across from it, and I was waiting in emergency. And um, when they called the ambulance in and wheeled my daughter out, I knew at that point that not everything was going to be okay because she was bewildered, she was she couldn't communicate she had urinated everywhere and it took every bit of willpower not to lose you know not to lose everything in that point in time and I knew that I had to be strong for her sake but it's it's not something nice to watch and I've watched over a hundred seizures with her not one of them is any easier than the watching it for the very first time mm -hmm. yeah now, we've got on watching with us Beth Williams today. So her partner had epilepsy and he passed away five months ago. Um, so I'd imagine what you're doing is, so you do what you do from your own personal experience. It helps you, it helps you get along through the journey as well. But it helps other people. So you are. This isn't. This walk isn't just about raising awareness for epilepsy. What it does, you're raising. Sorry, the walk's not just about. I lost you after that. The walk is is about raising awareness. But not only awareness. It's about raising money. So tell us about who you're raising money for. Sure. So uh, this time around, I've chosen to support the Jamie Lee Ross Foundation. Now, as a parent, one of the greatest fears um, is to lose your child to a seizure or to lose anyone to a seizure. And so with the Jamie Lee Ross Foundation, their daughter was 18 years old when she um, had a seizure in her sleep and she never woke up again. So 
because that's obviously one of my greatest concerns, I've elected that our values align and I've elected that any money above the cost of this trip will be donated to the Amy Lee Ross Foundation and essentially a 100% not-for-profit organisation that's run solely with family and friends and volunteers. So they are... Um, raising money for seizure mats um, and I think they've donated over 30 seizure mats so far in the, in the couple of years that they've been uh, as a foundation. Could you just explain what seizure mats are? So Sure. Yep, so it's just a, a smallish type of mat that will sit underneath the mattress of the bed so that when a, a child or a person has a tonic-clonic seizure, so the full body um, shaking seizure, um, it will set off an alarm during the night. So what it does, it gives a peace of mind to the parents that they can have a sleep because one of the big things with epilepsy as a parent is you become extremely sleep-deprived. Mm. Um, and as many people know, when you sleep it is hard to handle a lot of other things. Yeah. So just having one of these little supports of um, popping a seizure mat where you know that you can sleep because the alarm is going to be high pierced enough to wake you from your sleep should your child have a seizure, it just gives you that peace of mind. That's, these seizure mats are worth around $1,000. Well, that's, that's, that's amazing and so it would be a blessing to be able to, to get one of those if your child did have epilepsy so it's a what we can do is we've actually hooked up what we call our chatbot uh if people yeah. and if people want to make a donation towards the jamie it's jamie lee ross where's the thing there we go jamie lee ross foundation uh, you can't see what's happening on the screen sherry but the only's no. the only's producing she's just popped up the name here jamie, jamie lee ross foundation sherry set up a gofundme page and you'll find that if you can just type hope h-o-p-e uh, below then you'll be able to access the link it'll be sent direct to your inbox and you can donate to the jamie lee ross foundation uh, through the gofundme page that uh, sherry has set up and that is that that's open for uh when's when's your eta in that because this after we've been live this show will still have uh circulation so uh that i guess that would stay open does it or is there a close off day for your gofundme page sherry Yes, the date, did you say, is that what you're asking? Yes. The date when I arrived, yeah, so I arrived in Darwin around about the 13th of June. Uh, Go and page will remain open for a few weeks after that anyway. So, um, yeah, whenever people are, uh, it's convenient for them financially to donate um, and outside, if for some reason that gets shut down quicker than expected, you can always contact me on my Facebook page if you wish to make a donation or director in the right. Um, channels beautiful so if you're watching this either live or on replay just remember that there are amazing people out there doing amazing things to help their loved ones and other people in the community as well so it's just um it's just amazing what what are the well, i just have to ask you about those flies again what are they what are they like up there now what's it it's like cold I say, what do they taste like is what i thought yeah, you were going to say <laughs> <laughs> they weren't waking up. It's a bit of a cool morning. Um, so in comparison, the flies are pretty um, tame, but I would not walk out without a fly because I wouldn't be able to do this interview without swallowing probably six of them. So, it would be breakfast. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's still plenty of flies around. It is a good walking morning this morning because it is overcast. It is a bit cooler for in the Northern Territory. Mm -hmm. um, but we have had days where we're up close to the 40s and it absolutely takes it out of you physically. Um, but we're trying to hydrate as much as we can um, mm -hmm. and we just keep pushing forward. And what's your average uh, kilometres? Like you would have to have some sort of plan that... Um... Right. Yeah, it, it does take, it does depend a little bit on the day because depending on the injuries that I've had the night before and, and you know, a variety of different factors because there's a, there's a lot of emotion involved with this trip as well. Mm. Um, my best that I've done so far is 51Ks. That mm. was a personal best over my entire walk um, and sitting around 40 to 45Ks a day. So you're looking at a, at a marathon a day. Yeah, it's amazing. That is that is stellar stellar performance there and and you i did read on your page also that you are always looking to um to beat your own personal best so yeah yeah that's it yeah oh, yeah so. 
I'm just living a life where I feel empowered so that it can inspire people to reach their highest potential because we all face traumas and challenges in yeah. our life. But if we can find, you know, the, the benefits or the, the purpose of it, it can step us up to another level where we can, you know, help other people um, step forward and move forward as well. Well, you've definitely inspired me and I think maybe not to walk to Darwin but definitely to <laughs> to get over any any pity parties that I may have been having, may or may not have been having over the last few days. <laughs> yeah. So I just, yeah, you're an amazing woman. You're doing some amazing things. I think we're going to wind it up now. Theone, did you have any last final words? I would like to catch up with you when you get back to Adelaide. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, meet the person in real life. <laughs> I'd love to meet you know, in real life. This is a little bit short of this, this service out here, yeah. but that's the, that's the outback for I definitely like us to uh, have another interview with you once you've finished the walk and you're regrouped and you're back and we can get you on video. <laughs> and uh, But I'm just going through, I'm just sharing with everyone the photos on your page. The journey is absolutely incredible. I just, you're an absolute inspiration. Like we have talked about doing a walk from Adelaide to Broken Hill and I'm like, can't do that. But the distance isn't even half of what you're doing. So... <laughs> Nothing's impossible. <laughs> I'm getting blisters on my feet just thinking about it. I think we need to talk. <laughs> I think we need to grow grow a pair. Grow a pair. And you just break through the pain after that. You do. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Well, Sherry, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute Hi. pleasure. We will follow your uh, your walk. And we will definitely catch up when you're back in Adelaide. And I'm thinking we might even do a live where we all go out and we actually broadcast live from somewhere, not just from our desk because uh, what you're doing is getting out and about. And I think we need to do that with, uh, with the show with no name as well. So. I'd love to spend some quality time. Um, Beautiful. All right. Well, look, all the best. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. And you have, we'll, we will be following. We'll touch base soon. Bye. Beautiful. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, what, a, what a woman. What a woman. What a woman. It's total yeah. inspiration. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you would like more information on how you can donate the word hopes the word you need to use h o p e and you will receive a message into messenger from the bot and yeah and you know even if you're not in a position to donate you might know someone who can epilepsy is something that can affect you at any age so my husband had his first seizure at 42 so if you know of people who will benefit from this information or would like to hear Sherry's story and would like to support Sherry, please let them know because we need your help to get this these stories out there. That's right. There's a link to Sherry's page in the blurb above. Click on it, like the page, follow the journey. All details on how you can help are on her page. Make sure you do follow. There are some pretty cool photos on there. And the story, I mean, who walks 53, you know, 51 Ks in a day? It's not who something has their that birthday you... out there with a bunch of flies. <laughs> she was I know. Who needs protein bars? <laughs> <laughs> who needs protein bars? All right. Well, thank you for joining us for another episode of the show with no name. We do look forward to seeing you next Thursday at 9:30 a.m. Australian Central Standard Time on MyTimeTV.live. Bye for now. <laughs>